Hi right, guys, what's up YouTube family? In it just checking back in. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are one step closer to your dreams and goals. So guys, today we're gonna talk about the charlatan Dr. Zakir Nike, who we thought was a hero as children, but we did not have the mental capacities to realize that this camel piss drinking son of Muta is nothing but a garbage lying sack of shit, guys. So basically, right, this guy says some horrifying things, but I'm glad that he says it. You know why? Because it's proof to show the disgusting nature and the reality of Islam, right? It's like an iceberg, guys. When they bring you in the dawah, all the reverts who come in the comments and attack us, oh, I've been a revert for Islam for a year now. Just shut up, bro. Just shut up. Whoever you are, you have no idea what you're talking about. You have no idea what you got yourself into. In a year or two, you'll be leaving it. But nonetheless, it's an iceberg. The tip of the iceberg is all the nice, fancy stuff, and then at the bottom of it is all the dark stuff. Let's look at the video really quickly, guys. Waalaikum, waalaikum assalam, hantarabarakatuh. Shafin Rashad from Kerala, India. May Allah bless you. I have a query. May Allah forgive me if I'm saying something wrong. Allah is most merciful and most gracious. Suppose I committed the rape and killed the girl. The case is not proved in the court, and I'm freeing, and I'm free in this world. After a long time, I truly repented about this to Allah. As we know, Allah will forgive anything except shirk. If Allah forgives me, where is the justice for the girl I raped and killed? Of Allah. So the Shafin Rashad from Kerala asked a question that hypothetically. If he rapes or and he murders a girl, and if the court of law in this country or in this world cannot prove him wrong and he goes scot free, later on he realizes his mistake and he truly repents. And he knows that Allah is Rahman Rahim, and if he truly repents, Allah will forgive. His question is then, will that be justice to the girl who has been raped and killed? Now, first you have to understand that Allah says in the Quran in Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 2, Allah khalaqal mawta wal hayata. It is Allah who has created death and life to test which of you is good indeed. So this life is a test for the hereafter. We have been tested. So Allah tests different people in different ways. He tests some people by giving luxury. He tests some people by giving poverty. So Allah tests different people in different way. Now regarding a question, that if hypothetically you rape a girl and you murder her, and if the court of law in this world cannot prove, and then you truly repent, will Allah forgive you? And you say most probably Allah will forgive you. And you're right. If you have committed, if you have committed rape and murder, and if you truly repent and ask for forgiveness, as I told, there are five criteria required for forgiveness. Number one is you admit what you have done is wrong, that the sin that you have done is wrong, admit it. Number two, see to it that you stop it immediately. Number three, see to it that you don't do it again. Number four, is that you ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If all these criteria are fulfilled, inshallah I'll forgive them. Even if you have committed rape, which is a major sin, and if you have uh, <laughs> committed murder, it's a major sin. But if you truly repent, Allah will forgive you. As we know, Allah is the Amman Rahim. Now coming to your second question, that is this not injustice to the girl who was raped and murdered? And I would say no. Because both the person who raped is undergoing a test in this world, the person who was raped also is undergoing a test. And let me explain to you that Allah has given guidelines to the woman that they should dress up modestly, they should cover their complete body, except those parts can be seen that is the face. Now if, if after giving all these guidance, and hypothetically, if that girl doesn't dress up modestly, she is dressed up, immorally, which people get excited and the rape is done, who's to blame? It is even the girl to blame. That doesn't mean that the boy has a right to rape. But besides the 
boy who committed the rape and murdered, it is the girl who also has to follow the guidelines of the Quran. If she wore obscene clothes because of which the rape took place, then she's responsible. But if she wore normal clothes and yet if the person rapes, then it is a test. It's in the video that he says that there's five things that you need to do for Allah to forgive you for this. And he only quoted four things. And he started curling his shoulders and getting uncomfortable. His body language started to change, right? Because he's getting this cognitive dissonance about such a dark question. And he has to admit on camera that basically the man, guys, think about this. Oh my God, the guy asked if he raped and murdered a woman. And we believe this is not a hypothetical question. We believe that this man really did this, but he's asking because it bothered him, right? So when he asks this, the guy, Zakir Naik, says that he will be forgiven by Allah for raping and murdering a woman. And that the guy asks, but if I get forgive, if I get forgiven, won't that be an injustice against a woman? And he goes, No, because everything we do in this life is a test. So your test was raping the woman and her test was getting raped and that she will not be getting justice because Allah tested her in a way where she was supposed to follow the rules of the Quran. So basically, if a woman does not follow the rules of the Quran and the Sharia, they basically deserve whatever happened to them. This is the logic of the true Islamic scholars and the true Islamic men. So remember, the woman, the true Islamic woman, they have to, they have to, um, they have to basically uh, wear gloves. They have to cover everything. The only thing that can be shown is their eyes. Some of them, they show the face because some of them are just wearing the burqa and some of them are just wearing the hijab. But nonetheless, right, guys, remember, if women are not um, walking around dressed like the Grim Reaper or wearing tablecloths and dressed like in Halloween costumes, like we said in the previous video. It is her fault for existing. Islamic logic is that because a woman exists, it's her fault of any sexual violence against her because she has to cover herself from head to toe to not provoke anyone, not her brother, not her father, not her brother-in-law, and not anyone on the street, right? Look at this video really quickly here with Sheikh. My own wife to do that because once she puts it on, it shapes her shoulders, her back, maybe even her waist, and maybe tightens the abaya so that her chest would also be uh, apparent more than if she did not wear the backpack. If she wants to wear it, she can wear it underneath the abaya, put the abaya on top. No one can see the difference except this hump on the back, but nothing else. But to wear it on top of the abaya, uh, this is totally inappropriate and Allah knows best. The guy saying that he wouldn't even let his own wife wear a backpack because the straps of the backpack might end up pulling her abaya, which is her dress basically, uh, back to a point where her chest will be showing or her waist or any other features of her. And this is no no for him. What kind of mindset do these guys have, guys? Think about it. They have little children dressed up hiding themselves they they like uh, if, if, if you go to the swimming pool you have to dress up in a halloween costume like come on guys we saw in the previous video the muslim lantern and sheikh ibn farouk over here admitting the fact that if a woman was in a bikini like how people are dressed in the beach that they would be lusting over them and stuff like that like come on guys wake up muslim people that defend this run from this women if you have any respect for you run from this guys share this video let people know that these are the type of things these are the dark intrusive things that come out remember just like the quran says guys that you have right hand possessions and you can do whatever you want with them shabir ali in this video right here look shabir ali can have uh, up to four wives at once and addition in addition to the four wives he can have an unlimited number of concubines um, which uh, refer to women who are basically uh, have they have slave status uh, when they are owned by uh, her master uh, a woman owned by her master um, 
it has to freely give of herself to, to the master. The master has the right to have uh, sexual relations with her. How does, does consent play into this at all? By virtue of the fact that she's owned, uh, she, she does not have the right to, to consent uh, she, uh, or to withhold herself from her master. Uh, the master has the full right over her and her consent does not play anything in, in this uh, relationship. Basically confirmed that if you have right hand possessions, they have no consent. You can rape women as much as you want. Like, guys, this is what they're saying publicly. But no one is showing these things or putting effort into these things because Islam is a big money game. And anything like this, they don't care because it will bring shame and a lot of people will protest this, but they don't do it, guys. The algorithms on YouTube try to hide this. People uh, says that women can prostitute themselves to get out of slavery. The Quran says that Muhammad has exclusive sex rights. The, the Quran says every time you have sex with a woman, make sure you pay her. Halal prostitution. Halal means permissible. Haram means not permissible, right? So how halal prostitution is is basically a religious legal authority of how you can have sex with people aka it's fornication but in a legal way according to islam sharia law they want a man to witness they want witnesses for the woman to say that she got raped and remember if a woman gets raped and there's no witnesses or proof then it's seen that she's committed adultery if she's married and if she's not married it's fornication she's going to get lashes and in the extreme case, she's going to get killed, guys. Even though she's the one that got raped. There's cases where people get raped and they have to marry their rapist. Because it's going to bring shame. There's cases, especially around brown people. You know, it's, it's like a, uh, a brown culture, right? Basically, if the girl gets raped, they're going to kill their daughter. The father's going to kill the daughter. It's called an honor killing. They're going to honor kill their children because it brings shame to the family that she had gotten raped. They they rather her be dead. Right? They even that camel piss drinker, the one that got murdered by poison. Thank God. Thank God that Jewish woman did a service for the Lord. That dirty Muhammad, but that pedophile Muhammad, he said majority of hell is filled with women because they don't what? They don't uh, obey their husbands. That's why they end up in hell, not even for committing a crime. Right? And the Muslims are going to go try to defend it in the chat. They're going to go try to defend it. And guys, like we said, share this video, guys. Share, like, subscribe. But nonetheless, share this video. The algorithms like to hide these things. Algorithm does not like to troll the true Islamic nature. You know, all the other good things are being shown. The algorithm favors them. YouTube in America, they all want to talk about freedom of speech. But when you say certain things that is against Islam, because Islam is a big money business, they tried to censor you and try to block you and this and that. So, guys, please, it will, we will highly appreciate it if you guys can spread awareness about these dark, dark things. But nonetheless, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.